And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind when you see this athlete. <laughs> Character. Oh, no Your way. Goes in, I'm gone. Oh. <laughs> Today's guest is Tanasi Kokonakis. Dream car, Ferrari 812. Favorite rapper, Jay-Z. Let's go, Rush! Today's episode is brought to you by 2K. NBA 2K23 Michael Jordan Edition. I've loved playing this on my YouTube show, so if you want to get a copy, I've put a link in the video description below. Greatness is calling, answer the call. So Tanasi, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. So today we're going to battle it out in NBA 2K, but before we do that, I'm going to ask you a few questions. I'm going to start off by showing you a photo. Hit me. So as a kid, what did you love about this player so much? <laughs> That's funny. Safin, he's a legend. I like the way he played, first and foremost, but he showed his personality. He had fun on court, so I liked watching him. He was good to watch. He showed his energy and personality, which uh, you don't often see from tennis too much, so. And at what point did you realize that you had a special gift for playing tennis? Uh, it was pretty interesting, because I actually grew up playing basketball, and I followed my brother playing basketball, and then I hated Sunday practices. Sunday morning practices in basketball, I hated. The thing with basketball that I found was if I played well and my team lost, I'd be sick. If I played bad and my team won, I'd still be sick because I played bad. So the only time I was happy is if my team won and I played well. I realized I was selfish and yeah, I just picked up a racket in one of my brother's uh, training sessions and yeah, it was, it was better than I thought. So in your opinion, what is the difference between a good tennis player and a Grand Slam winning tennis player? Oh, it's just hours and discipline. Uh, it takes it takes a lot. I'm sure it's the same with, with every sport, but you can get to a certain point, but the, the guys that do really well, they just love it. Like every day they, they walk in with a purpose. You see it on their face. They're hungry to work. They're hungry to, to have that. And some weeks I'm not always there mentally, but um, the more weeks you have that, definitely the better chance you have. All right, I'm going to show you another photo. Okay. And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind when you see this athlete. <laughs> Character. Um, he, is, he is one of a kind. I've known Nick since we were sort of nine, ten years old. Big chubby boy from Canberra growing up and just had he wore all this Jordan gear. Um, had a lot of personality again, super talented. And he's kind of been the same since he was nine, ten as, as to what you see now. It's just now there's a, a million viewers and a lot of cameras watching him. So um, yeah, he's a personality for sure. He's fiery and uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty fun to be around. And how would you describe your relationship? Because I mean, obviously people see how you guys yeah. play together. What's the relationship like off the court? It's good, it's pretty chill. I mean, we know each other super well. We've had a lot of nights out together, a lot of experiences shared. Um, I think we both trust each other a lot and that's something probably he's not confident in too many people around him, what they want him for and so on. So I've known him for ages. We've traveled together, represented Australia together for years and obviously winning our first Grand Slam. Um, we get along really well. It's, he's a lot more chill off the court than what he is on the court. He's super competitive, but uh, yeah, we can just, we honestly just kick back talking hoops most of the time, to be honest. That's uh, cool. what we do, yeah. Yeah, nice. He's a big Celtics guy. So. Yeah, I know. And who's your team? <laughs> I'm Phoenix. I'm Phoenix. I'm Chris Paul, to be honest. So, a little bit of a bandwagoner, but not really. I met him, we had the same agency growing up. Um, so, I got to meet him, followed me on socials, and I was like, this is my guy. I love the way he was watching him play from New Orleans days. I met him when he was in LA playing for the Clippers. That's cool. Yeah. All right, I've got another photo. What's the first feeling that you get when you see this? Yeah. Um, crazy, to be honest. It's not something we expected. Uh, just happiness. Um, just a crazy summer for me, to be honest. I won my first title in singles, and then that's, I can honestly th say that's something we didn't expect. We played together in the past. We won Junior Wimbledon, but you know, that means nothing on the professional tour. And to see the traction it got and the atmosphere um, on those courts and, and see how much the people of Melbourne and Australia loved it um, and the engagement it got worldwide was, uh, it was a special feeling that uh, I'll never forget. I'm just filthy at him. He didn't come out with me after on a night. <laughs> I'll still, I'll still rip him about it for sure. So, what's the first thing that you did after winning the Grand Slam and walking off the court? Mate, honestly, I had a drug test, so I had to pee in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> and how has winning a, a Grand Slam changed your life? Obviously, sponsor stuff um, and stuff like that. It's just good to have some results to show for the hard work and, and things that sort of people remember you by. You know, that you're always known as that tennis player, but then you want to have big titles and achievements and 
um, to do it in Australia. It's, it's changed because obviously a lot more eyeballs, a lot more people um, are watching and, and kind of know of you. Yeah, a little bit more expectation as well, but it's it's definitely it's definitely something I, uh, I relish and I love. All right, well, let's get into the game. Get into it, all right. And I've heard on the street uh, your reputation with NBA 2K, you're, you're quite good. Yeah, I'm not bad. I used to used to play a fair bit, to be honest. I used to, I think my, my record online once was 79 and three. In your kind of heyday of 2K, you were playing almost every day? Yeah, yeah, a few hours every day. Um, I, was, I was hammering it. It was all I'd look forward to after training. I was like, it's probably a healthier lifestyle. Oh, oh. God, there's no way. There's no way this just happened. And you obviously keep up to date with all the NBA games? Like yeah, I'm in like three fantasy leagues. Oh, wow. Um, my team always gets crippled with injury, so we'll see. Oh. Yeah. I don't feel good about that. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't feel good about the M1. So do, do you get to many NBA games? Like, I mean, I know your schedule's like pretty full on. Saw a uh, Brooklyn Nets and Miami Heat game. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, that was cool. Saw the Aussies play there. I'm up 9-8. This is... Yeah, I don't like, like this. I'm going gonna, gonna to put the clamps on. I'm going to play some zone here. It's cool. Yeah. Well, while we're on the NBA subject, I'm going to start off with a, a photo. If you can tell me what was... I saw this on your Instagram. And yeah, I'm curious yeah. to know what was going on this day. I had a bit of time off. I think I had a day off in, in New York and my fitness trainer is used to actually train or used to be in charge of the current fitness trainers for Brooklyn Nets. So went into their facility in Brooklyn and it's a pretty cool spot, real like industrial. And yeah, went into the locker room and the players weren't there at the time, but crazy seeing the skyline in their practice facility. Um, so I thought it was a good opportunity not to, even though I'm a Suns fan, it was, it was sick. Looking at uh, the locker room and seeing KD, all his shoes, Oh, all yeah. Kyrie shoes, it's, uh, it's pretty sick. And does that inspire you to play like better tennis when you go to the NBA facilities? Yeah, definitely. Just seeing how well it's kind of made out. They got like personal chefs there for all the players and their dietary needs. I'm like, wouldn't mind that as well. Um, but just, yeah, it's just awesome to see, especially when you watch so much NBA growing up, you play the games and then you're, you're kind of in and around the facilities uh, with the players. And I got to shoot a few hoops. so. Yeah, it was pretty good. That's cool. It was fun. Well, let's go back to the tennis court because yep. the, the big difference is, you know, you're playing obviously individually a lot of the yep. time. And I always wonder when I watch the games, you know, you're under so much pressure. Yeah. How do you deal with that pressure? Sometimes not well, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. That's why you see a lot of a lot of players break their rackets and go nuts. Um, I'm trying to think what the equivalent is in the NBA. I guess you get a tech foul or get ejected or you throw your mouth guard or something like that. But uh, it's tough, yeah, if, if, you're, if your coaching team says too much, you know, you get a warning and then you can potentially lose points and it'll, it'll ruin you for the match. So it's, uh, it's tricky. Sometimes you want to have guys out there helping you, but I guess that's the beauty of tennis. You know, you've got to figure it out yourself. Five minutes before you walk out onto the court, yeah. what is going through your head? Your mindset is like, I better not lose this match. But, you know, I think that's just the anxiety of just competing and the nervousness. Um, I think everyone goes through it. Uh, you kind of don't want to embarrass yourself. You want to play uh, to what you think you're capable of or to play to your potential. Um, and that's not always the case. You're playing against sort of high level athletes or the best in the world. And when you're going out there, you're just trying to think, I'm going to give it my all, um, trust the work I've done in practice and, and give it a red hot crack. And win, win or lose, you can kind of you can kind of go out with your head held high if you've given everything you can, so. Before we get into the third quarter, final question, what would be your biggest dream? To win the Australian Open in singles. I think that, that would be nuts. Obviously, Ash did it on the women's this year, um, but for a male to, to win Australian Open would be, I think it'd be crazy. It'd send Australia into an absolute frenzy. Obviously, we won the doubles, um, so that was fun, but I think winning a home Grand Slam I won my home tournament in Adelaide, which was a massive achievement for me. I know Australia, winning Australian Open was big, but that was probably my proudest achievement. To win a singles Grand Slam in Australia would be would be crazy. Well, let's get into the third quarter. No. Here we go. Lou Dort. Are you the kind of person that you just get competitive with oh, everything yeah. that you do? Yeah, and if I'm losing, I'll just say I wasn't trying. Uh, okay, I still got hope. I'll try and hit a three. I'm gonna try something dirty. Oh, no if way. If goes in, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's taken them too. I feel bad. <laughs> uh, look, 10 points down, I'm not, not too upset. No, you take that. Oh, I'm gassed. That's not going to work. Oh, Ooh, tough close. Tough, tough. Oh, good game. Congratulations. Thank you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> one of my greatest achievements. <laughs>